We're out at the bee yard today, the old bee yard. We haven't moved the beehives yet. We're gonna do that soon. Today I'm gonna look into a couple of the hives, take those feeders out and prepare the hives a little bit and get ready for uh, when we're gonna move the bees, which should be hopefully within the next few days. If you don't know, the reason we're moving bees into a new bee yard is because we're getting a second horse and he's gonna be here Gosh, I keep saying this, but I really do believe it's going to be within the next week. So we're going to try to get these bees taken care of today so we can be ready for Teo. I don't expect we're going to need the smoker too much today because I'm not really doing a whole lot. But I'm going to light it anyway just in case. This first hive, hive number, I think it's three now. The first one in the first position from left to right should be easy enough. It's a, sing it's a single stack, deep hive, but it does have the feeders on top, so we're gonna take those off first. I don't see much traffic. That's always concerning to me. I hope this hive is okay. Well, there are bees. The feeders are empty. I expected them to be. They did their job. The bees have been fed. So we're going to take these back to the house. Hey little guy. Little girl. Right there. Put her back in the hive. Go ahead. It's like I got a little bit of mold growing in there because they've been sitting for so long empty. I'll clean those up. I don't have to do a whole lot to this hive. I'm really just taking the top off so that I can prepare it to be moved. Take this top box off, set it aside, and I'm gonna crack it open just to see how this hive is doing. I think they should be doing okay. Right there, it looks like the bees are doing fine. It's a really nice day. Uh, it's, it's in the 70s. What if a baby bee come out? Do other baby bees? What are those little bugs all over it? The box. And those beetles? Those are beetles. Not hive beetles, but um, yeah, I'm not sure. That right there is a Mexican honey wasp. Probably not a, baby bee. not a baby bee. Hoping to get some of the pollen and stuff that, that dropped out of here, probably. Yeah. So we got some... I don't know if those are... I'll have to look again to see what those are, but that is a Mexican honey wasp. And all of those, I think those are babies of those. Not sure. They look pretty good. Still most of the work that they're doing is in this portion of the hive. They haven't expanded out a whole lot. Let's just take a look at some of these hives or frames down on the end. What are you looking for? I'm looking to see what kind of resources they're putting in this frame. They are packing pollen in here, which is really good to see. They're, they're bringing in pollen, so they're packing it away for later. This is their store of pollen. This last frame really is still nothing, not much. When I put it in here, it had that honey on it, and it's, they're just keeping that honey. They haven't done anything with it. Gonna set that over here, get it out of the way for a second. Now they're getting a little upset. No, they're okay. I'm gonna check this frame out. I'm not, I'm not gonna dig in. I'm only gonna take a couple frames out. They do have some nectar in this one. That might be the sugar water that we gave them, or it might actually be nectar. That's a liquid down in there. This side has more pollen. So they're packing away their resources. They're, they're doing what they need to do. I'm gonna leave them alone. Slide these back in here. Put my towels back on. It's not really the season for hive beetles, but I'm gonna keep those towels in there just in case. 
Yeah, if anyone knows what those little red bugs are, that would be great. I'd like to know. I'm pretty sure they're babies, baby uh, beetles of those larger beetles. When I move this hive, I'm going to be strapping, wrapping a strap around it to hold it all together and also putting a blocker board on the front. That way, I'm going to do that after dark so when the bees come in for night, I'm going to block them off, shut their door, and I can move that hive and open that door when it's convenient. For me, I'll be able to take that blocker board off in the morning after I move the hive and cover that hive entrance up with grass or something to help them come out and reorientate uh, reorient it, reorientate to where they, they are now that after they've been, been moved. Whew, that was terrible. All right, let's go look at down here at the next couple hives. Hives four and six are still alive after hive five is gone, but those are down here. That's the entrance of hive number six that you're recording right now. Right now they, they're doing fine. They haven't been disturbed, but I imagine they will start coming out pretty soon because we're gonna be talking and banging around a little bit. All right, hive four, let's see how they're doing before their big move. Ugh. They've really stuck that on there pretty good. Okay, let's see, let's go ahead and take, I'm gonna, these towels are pretty much shot. I'm gonna take those off. They're done. They're full of propolis, dead beetles. Look at that mass. That's all propolis, that gluey type stuff that they put in the hive. I'm just gonna check out hive number four here. Take a, f a frame out of the top box. Boy, they have really stuck this hive together. Wow. Look at all that honey. That is solid packed honey. This is honey that they're gonna have going through the winter. That, that's a heavy, very heavy frame. That is solid, solid packed honey. And I am not, I'm also not gonna dig around a whole lot in this hive number four today because I really just wanted to make sure that we still had a colony here and that they're doing okay. And it really does appear, let me get in there just a little bit more. Hive four has been pretty good to me. Look at all that honey. Solid packed honey. I wanted to take enough of these out so I could see down in there. Okay, I'm satisfied. Really, I'm gonna leave hive four alone. There's real no, no reason, I don't think, to get in there and dig around and disrupt them. Uh, they look like they're doing fine. There's lots of bees down in there and lots of honey on the top. It looks like they're congregating on the bottom, hopefully working around a bunch of brood. Baby bees. Although in the winter, Bees don't always do a whole lot of brooding. They don't have a lot of eggs. The girls. So there's a spider on that one, is that okay? Yeah, spiders get in the hives often. I don't know if it's really good or bad for the bees. I'll lay that next to the hive. Maybe they'll reuse it. That's the propolis. All right, we're gonna cover this hive back up, put that top cover on, the inner cover. There's that spider. Again, when we get ready to move this hive, I'm gonna put a strap around it to hold it all together and put that blocker board on the front. And uh, this one's gonna be a little heavier because that's probably that's at least 60 to 70 pounds of honey on top. And then whatever the bees in the boxes and all the brood and honey in the bottom would weigh. So this one's gonna be a little harder to carry. This one's gonna be the hardest to carry because it's the biggest and all of these boxes are full. Do you really need to get in that one? I think they're fine. I saw them. 
Two votes with Mama Curbs. <laughs> Mama Curbs does not want me to open. That's the first time you've ever referred to yourself as Mama Curbs. Mama Curbs is choosing that uh, or asking that we don't open Hive 6 because there's apparently no reason to and they will come out a lot hotter than these other two hives and we really didn't come back here today meaning to stir a lot up we just wanted to see if things were okay. Hive 6 has lots of bees coming and going so we're going to leave it alone for now and be done. Yay! golf cart over here and take a lot of these things that have been just sitting here back up to the house. I haven't really known where to store frames with wax. It's been a little bit of a challenge for me. What I have discovered is if I, if I store them outside with space between them where air and sunlight can get to them, a lot of the pests, for example, the wet, uh, wax moths and hive beetles don't get in it. They don't care because they, they want something dark they can hide in. But the, the challenge with leaving it out here is that uh, sometimes I get mice and wasp and other animals that want to come in and take some of the resources. Now here's, here's one that has a wax moth on it because it was leaning up. That's a wax moth, and that is a wax moth trail. There's a, a larva working through there. So these do have to go in the freezer before I can utilize them. What if you left it out in the bright sunlight? I do leave them in the sunlight. Would it kill it? Uh, it might. There's another one of those Mexican honey wasp. I don't know if it would kill the wasp, but it, it might kill the larva. The, most of these have been leaning with lots of air and light between them, but if you noticed, these two were leaning very close together. That gave just enough cover for those, uh, for that moth to feel comfortable in there. So we're gonna open that up again. I just gotta carry these resources back up to the house. This is not the best way to handle your beekeeping equipment. I think that's obvious. I haven't. I haven't discovered how I need to do this yet. One of the reasons I've considered getting into doing top bar hives, there's one of those beetles. They must be liking the, uh, the pollen and the resources as well. Top bar hives have a lot less equipment, no boxes, and it only just has the bars, the top bars that lay inside the hive. I think it would be pretty nice to get into doing top bar hives in place of the Langstroth hive which is these these uh, square boxes that most people use simply because there is fewer boxes less equipment but it's a whole different beekeeping strategy so I would have to learn that Alright, that leaves the apiary or the bee yard fairly empty. Whenever we start moving stuff, I'm going to have to move that hive, that first hive, and then move the hive stand, and then put the first hive back on the hive stand, and then probably put the hive number four down there next to hive number one or three. I'll renumber and rename these once I get them in place. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly how moving them is going to happen, but that's coming real soon. If you liked this video, please share it with your friends and family. There is no greater gift that you can give a content creator than to share their content. Thank you so much for hanging out with me here in the bee yard, the bee apiary, the daddy curbs farm. I'll talk to you soon.